All right, kiddo. Time for bed. Hmm? Please read me another chapter before I go to sleep. Okay, but after that, it's lights out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this chapter is about a pirate named Captain Crown who lived right here in Louisiana. Maybe even in this very house. That's scary. Some folks believe he hid his treasure deep in the swamps. And it's there where his ghost forever dwells to punish those who go looking for his gold. Daddy, are ghosts real? Of course not, sweetie. It's past your bedtime. Time for sleep. Hmm? <laughs> 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 Get under the bed. Detective, I'm glad you've arrived. My daughter and I are worried sick about the disappearance of my husband, Marcus. We just moved here to Louisiana. Now he's missing, and I don't know what to do about it. The locals are all too afraid of some ridiculous curse to help us search for him. You're the only one who can find him and return him safely to us. Not long after we moved in, my husband became convinced this place was cursed by a ghost. The ghost of a pirate. Can you believe such nonsense? He overheard the neighbors rambling on about a pirate's hidden fortune. A few days ago, he finds a map he believes has clues to the hidden treasure. He gets completely obsessed, starts tearing this place apart, and now he's missing. My husband found a map of the property not long after we moved in. With all the locals' talk of pirates, he thought it might be some sort of treasure map. <laughs> it's there on the couch, but it looks like the dog's had its way with it. You might have to search around a bit to find the missing pieces. There's some tape around here to keep it together.
It looks like you've got the map piece back together, all right. If nothing else, it should help you get your bearings around the estate. You might want to begin your investigation by speaking with Mary, the cleaning woman we hired. It sounds like she's working in the bedroom upstairs. Again, thank you so much for helping us, Detective. We were unexpectedly willed this old estate by Marcus's great aunt. He thought it was our big break. After some discussion, we sold our house and moved here from Ohio. If only we'd known what a run-down dump this place was. Our daughter Magnolia was the last person to see her daddy before he disappeared. I'm not sure I believe her, as she also claims to have seen a ghost that night. <laughs> I'm afraid all of this has just been too much for her. How do you do, Detective? My name is Mary. Mary Lee. My husband and I found work here by way of an advertisement placed by Mrs. Lawson. They needed some help fixing up the place, and times being what they are, we gladly accepted. Certainly is a shame about her husband gone missing. Between me and you, there's something not quite right about this place. been kind of lean for my husband and me. The bank foreclosed on our house, so we got to make do by finding jobs place to place. One of the nice things about working for the Lawsons, they let us stay in that old carriage house down the road a ways. Poor child. She ain't been out of that room in days. Can't say I blame her. If I saw a ghost taking away my daddy, well, I'd hide my head under the covers, too. She only comes out when she's hungry. And she locks herself back inside. Of course I believe in ghosts. Local folks say that there's a pirate ghost that walks along the hall in the manor with us. Now, I ain't got time to be jawing with you. Not when there's work to be done. Now, why don't you make yourself useful and go get me some cleaning supplies and put them in that chest down by the foot of the bed?
home.
Thanks for lending me a hand, darling. This old place ain't been lived in in a long time. Longer still since it had a good cleaning. Well, I don't know who lived here before the Lawsons. Mrs. Lawson told me that some old relative of her husband's died and left him the manor and the land underneath it. <laughs> in its time, it was quite the place. <laughs> Now, it's just rotten into the swamp. That's what I heard at the tavern up the road. Folks say that the fellow that built this home was a famous pirate, and he retired here after a lifetime of looting on the high seas. Apparently now he spends all his time watching me clean his dirty toilets. Not much of an afterlife. Seems that Mrs. Lawson's husband heard the same talk as me. Only difference is, I have enough respect to leave the dead to their business and me to mine. I ain't never seen a ghost, and I don't want to. Still, there is something strange going on in this house. I'm sure you have noticed it. Have you seen that crazy clock? Take this damp cloth and the key and go to the music room. Help me clean a few dirty windows to see what I'm saying. Do you see what I'm saying about the oddities in this house? My husband, Lewis, and I have found strange things all over the place. That clock and that piano are perfect examples of what I'm talking about. And I'm not sure that I believe a pirate hid his treasure in this house. But then again, my beliefs are not necessarily those of other folk, if you know what I'm saying. You can rub your knuckles raw knocking on that door, but she ain't going to let you in. She's really been spooked. 
If you want to get inside, I suggest you find a spare key. I think Mrs. Lawson mentioned that there was one hidden in the upstairs hallway. I don't see how my beliefs are of any consequence to your investigation, Detective. I told you that spirits are not to be trifled with. We are surrounded by many energies. Some are good, and some are very bad. Magnolia, my mom said you're here to help us find Daddy. I don't normally hide in my room, but I really don't like this place. I wish we never moved here. I miss my old house and my friends, and now Daddy's been taken away by a ghost. Mom says we can leave as soon as we find Daddy. The night Daddy disappeared, he was in my room reading me a story about a pirate. That's when we heard sounds outside my bedroom door. It sounded like heavy boots climbing the staircase. And then we heard screams. I don't think it wanted us to see the stuff we found in the attic. We found an old jewelry box in the attic. It's really pretty, but we don't know how to open it. I guess I could let you see it, but I need you to do something for me first. I'm missing some crayons, and I'm too scared to leave my room. If you can get them and put them in my wooden case by the window, I'll let you see the jewelry box.
for bringing me the rest of my crowns. I hid the jewelry box that Daddy found behind the doll on the fireplace. Please be careful, though. I don't want the ghost to come back if you get it open.
You're really smart. Daddy wasn't able to open the box like you did. My mom doesn't believe me when I tell her about the ghost, but I swear it's true. The cleaning lady, Mary, believes me, but she kind of creeps me out, so I don't really talk to her much. I don't know. She's always whispering scary stuff and talking about how we shouldn't have moved here. That's why I didn't show the box. Or the secret Daddy found in the cellar. The box I showed you wasn't the only thing that Daddy found. There's something in the cellar, too. I'd show you, but I'm afraid of all the rats down there. If you get rid of them, I'll tell you where to find a clue in the cellar.
I'm glad you got rid of all those nasty rats in the cellar. They really grossed me out. Before Daddy disappeared, I saw him turning the bottles on top of the wine rack a certain way. I don't know what that does, but maybe you can find out. very busy. I can't believe you found a secret room in the cellar. I wasn't aware there was anything in there besides old wine and rats. <laughs> this house gets stranger by the minute. Why don't you ask Lewis if he's noticed anything odd around the estate? Lewis is Mary's husband. Like I said, once we saw the state of the manor, we knew we'd need help fixing the place up. We hired Lewis and Mary to do odd jobs around the property. Last time I saw him, he was doing yard work in the front. Why don't you go introduce yourself? You must be that detective I've been hearing about. My name is Lewis Lee. Looks like we're in for quite a storm this evening. What can I do you for? I got no idea where that fella got off to. People don't just disappear. On the other hand, them swamps is full of nasty critters just waiting to give you trouble. Snakes, gators, and the Lawsons ain't from around here. Maybe all that back and forth in the swamp with that map got him turned into somebody's dinner, if you know what I mean.
Same as the one you're carrying. I honestly do believe he thought falling that map around would lead him to riches. Listen, buried treasure, ghosts, UFOs got one thing in common. They ain't real. I don't put much stock in such nonsense, detective. My wife Mary is a different story. You may have met her upstairs in the manor. Mrs. Lawson hired us to clean up the place, but all this rain's making it hard to get anything done. You wouldn't mind fetching me some proper work gear. Rounding up them dry clothes, detective. Last thing I need to do is catch a cold. Hey, uh, what do you think of this uh, metal shape I found down by the base of the old fountain? Well, I don't know what it is either. Wish we knew where Mr. Lawson got off to, though. He promised to pay me cash for any of this weird stuff that I might dig up around here. Suppose he thought it was part of his lost treasure. You got to be kidding. You seen that crazy fountain? I don't know who built this place, but who put something like that in your front yard? You ought to climb up the attic if you want to see that other weird contraption. You could probably fix the stool out there in the shed if you can't reach the stairs to the attic. Of course, you're going to need some nails and other stuff first.
Judging from the ruckus upstairs, it sounds like you've been keeping yourself rather busy, Detective. Please tell me you've found some clues to Marcus's whereabouts. After Marcus found that map, he turned the third bedroom upstairs into Treasure Command Center. He used it as a dumping ground for all the junk he collected about this supposed pirate. It was the folks that he met at that tavern down the road that stirred his interest in all this nonsense. I don't know what it's called, just some towny dive bar down by the river. I would rather you stay focused on finding Marcus. But if you must, you should protect yourself from the mosquitoes. There should be some bug spray in the closet by the stairs. Oh, welcome to the drink and swallow, stranger. You here to pick up that carryout order? The chicken gumbo? Oh, never mind, Shug. I thought you was here from down the road a piece. 
Just as well, I guess. Our cook Lamont didn't bother showing up for work again tonight. Something about his gorda acting up on account of the weather. <laughs> well, say, you look like you know your way around the kitchen. Would you mind seeing if you could cook up that gumbo? It goes to the angry fella lives down the lane.
Special. Afternoon, stranger. Name's Vinton. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I work over at the library in Raceland. And normally I'd be over there updating the card catalogs right about now, but I heard it was ladies' night tonight. So I figured I'd wander on down to the Swaller, see if I couldn't bag me a honey. Why don't you sit down? Keep me company. <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking about. Shouldn't tracking people down be the sheriff's business? Unless that fellow owes you money. Is that it? You a gambler, stranger? <laughs> Listen, after a few drinks, I tend to forget my own history, let alone that of this here neighborhood. Besides, information you're looking for is from quite a while back. Tell you what, though, gambler, you beat me at a game of checkers, and I'll have someone look up the history of that house that fella just moved into.
Oh, come on. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Crud, Pucky. Go, <laughs> oh, dang it. Oh, come on. Crud, Pucky. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Oh, come on! <laughs> Crud hockey! <laughs> Crud hockey! <laughs> Crud Pocky. <laughs> Crud Pocky. done, stranger. You done bested me at my own game. Tell you what, give me a few minutes and I'll call my friend over at the library. Let me see what kind of historical information we can dig up on that there house of yours. I'll fax over whatever he finds. Now get lost. You're hurting my chances.
Ain't my supper. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about it being delivered by some stranger. You know, folks around here, we don't take kindly to strangers. <laughs> Mr. Who? Oh, you must mean that fella moved in next door. I wasn't aware he'd gone missing. All I know is he's keeping odd hours and, and poking around here like he lost something. I also heard that that couple they hired to clean up the place is into the devil magic. You know, voodoo. I hear tell Mary Lee does the cavorting with the spirits and such. 
If I were you, stranger, I'd keep my distance from that one. She's just trouble looking for a place to happen. Uh, you don't want to go mess with that. The house next door has been subject to speculation for a long while. Now, I, I can't tell you much about the house's history, but I can tell you this. It sat there empty for as long as I can remember. I'm surprised the Lawsons decided to move in, with it being cursed and all. Of course, they're not river folk like us and probably don't carry much sense. The curse of the pirate Phineas Crown. Some folks believe that house next door was built by him and that his ghost still walks the halls, keeping an eye out for folks trying to steal all his treasure. Listen, stranger, I'd love to talk with you more about this, but my wife's been nagging me all week to get that old air conditioner fixed. <laughs> How about this? Why don't you take a look at it and get that thing fixed, and then I'll tell you all I know about that pirate. <laughs>
Well, set me on an anthill and rub jam in my ears. If that's the sound of my old air conditioner running, you just made yourself a new best friend. Now you just tell me what old Cooter can help you with. Like I was saying, folks say the famous pirate Phineas Crown built that house next door. Some say he's buried in the cemetery down the road. Folks around here are smart enough to stay clear of that place. Oh, Phineas Crown was a wicked one, all right. He used to run a smuggling operation out of New Orleans in the 1700s and eventually got into pirate in the Gulf of Mexico. He and his men would sneak up alongside trading ships in the middle of the night and <coughs> everyone on board. Instead of looting the ship, he'd steal the whole dang thing. No one knows what happened to the ships he plundered. Some folks say he sailed them right up the Mississippi and into the swamps around here. When he got too old for pirating, he built a big old mansion and threw a party. And it was there, people say, that a horrible fire broke out and killed every last guest. Hi, 
detective. Welcome to Louisiana. My name's Charlotte. Why don't you cool off with a nice cold glass of lemonade? I take it you've had the misfortune of meeting my other half, Cooter. Good mercy. Where did I go wrong to marry that sack of bricks? Yes, we finally have some new faces just down the lane. I still should throw them a proper housewarming. I'm afraid Cooter doesn't like me leaving the house as he is just plumb sure that I will run off with another man. Anyway, I just spend my days watching my stories and working on my doll collection. Mr. Crickets belonged to my dear mother before she passed, rest her soul. You see, mother was deathly afraid of snakes. And since snakes are afraid of parrots, well, she found a feathered friend and a protector in Mr. Crickets. I apologize for the vulgarity the bird has learned from my loathsome husband. Oh, my dolls are my pride and joy. The doctor told us years ago that we should not have children because of Cooter's temper. But their tiny voices console me at night when I wish that I had made better life choices. Aside from Mr. Crickets, my dolls are my prized possession. I only need one more to complete my collection. And there's one in that game down at the tavern. But I've never had the good fortune of getting it out. I had some money to repay you, but Cooter handles the finances. I'll, I'll let you borrow Mr. Crickets for a little while, but you have to keep him away from that Mary Lee.
That woman working for them folks down the road should not be trusted. Who knows what kind of voodoo she could do to my sweet Mr. Crickets. If I were you, I would keep my eye on her. Just who do you think you are running around here making such a mess? That foul excuse for a dog got into the garbage that you saw fit to spread across the kitchen. Now it is one thing to be investigating the disappearance of Mr. Lawson. It is entirely another to be making a mess for me. Now I suggest you find that trash and pick it up. Detective, you smell like that garbage you've been picking up around here. If you've got a question to ask me, you best be quick about it. Like I said before, my beliefs are no concern of yours, Detective. If you have a hankering to find out about voodoo, I suggest you find your way downtown and speak with someone named Mama Amy. She runs the store down the way. She should be open about now and she can answer any questions you might have.
Welcome to Voodoo Absolute. Folks around these parts call me Mama Amy. Look like you got something on your mind, child. Come on in. Take a look around. Afraid I don't rightly know of any lost souls, child. The folks who moved in down the road best be moving on. Make no mistake. There's evil up there. I can tell by the look in your eyes you've seen the face of evil. I'm sure by now someone has told you about the curse of the evil Mr. Crown. I'd be happy to tell you more, but I don't much care for charity. The rain has been keeping me from restocking my inventory. How about you go fetch me some items for my display here? You do that, and I may teach you a little voodoo. Keep your hands off our property. for you, stranger. I don't know nothing about it. Frankly, I don't care to. Don't tell me you came all the way down here to ask me such foolish questions. Do I look like I want to be bothered? 
The only ghost around here is going to be wearing your shoes if you don't leave me alone. Thank you for running that errand, detective. Why don't you take this as payment? It's what I call a sleeping conjure. You put a little in someone's drink, and they will sleep fine for a short while. Is there anything else Mama Amy can do for you? Ooh. Just hearing that name makes my blood run cold. It's the man who built, and then rebuilt, the house down the way. I say rebuilt, because he burned it. He burned it to the ground with the screams of his 13 crewmen inside. He didn't want them knowing where he'd hid the treasure. One skull each, for every man who died in the fire. I suppose he wanted his crew with him long after he passed on. Find the skulls! And you find the treasure. <laughs> I reckon that nasty old Mr. Crown is keeping watch over what he don't want found. Best be careful out there, detective. Snakes and gators aren't the only trouble in those waters. The only reason someone would be out there is because they want to be left alone. I'm afraid you'll have to tell that Mrs. Lawson that no one has seen nor heard from her missing husband.
no one's heard of my missing husband. I've posted signs around town, and it's all over the paper. Marcus wouldn't have simply wandered off and left my daughter and I alone. It was his idea to move here in the first place. I'm sure those crazy locals had something to do with it. That crazy neighbor of ours. He fires his gun at anything that moves. How do I know he didn't attack Marcus? Have you met the lowlifes at that bar? That dive bar down by the, the river? Don't tell me that place isn't full of criminals. I'm beginning to wonder if that couple we hired isn't behind all this. There's something shady about them. I can't put my finger on it, but I've seen the way she looks at me. I thought we were doing them a favor by giving them jobs and letting them stay in the carriage house. I would appreciate it if you would quit running all these little errands and get to the bottom of things. Looks like that rain's here to stay this evening. How goes the investigation, detective? The dark magic is not something I recommend fooling with, detective. You best be keeping an eye out for the missing Mr. Lawson. And keep the other eye off me and my wife. That includes peeking round the corner where we're staying. That carriage house is going to stay locked. I told you everything I know, and you best be respecting our privacy. Well, I don't believe in ghosts, but that place makes me uneasy. Funny you ask, though. The only time I seen it open was the morning after Mr. Lawson disappeared. You can't be thinking that some ghost come out of his grave and went after him. Well, I never did actually unlock that gate, but I know where one of the keys is hiding. I suppose I could lend it to you, but... I need you to help me with something first. All this rain is making these weeds grow faster than I can get rid of them. How about you grab a pair of them garden shears and clip all them weeds along the side of the house? See what I mean about them weeds? It's like they got a mind of their own. That key I was telling you about's in a tin on the top shelf in the shed. If I was you, I'd be leaving that graveyard alone.
Special.
Good to see you again, child. What is it you brought with you? Why don't you let Mama Amy take a better look? Sure enough, this was fashioned to look like the man you are looking for. And I suspect it was found close to his belongings as well. <laughs> what you've got here is a conjure of hoodoo, not voodoo, child. Hoodoo is the opposite of voodoo. It's a good magic. The pins in the doll are wishes of kindness and hope. All Mary Lee's trying to do is help Mrs. Lawson get back her husband. <laughs> now, detective, you and I both know there's always suspects. If I were you, I would check the swamps again. The girl next door who works in the tavern, she knows her way around the backwaters real good. And detective, make sure your skull doesn't make 14. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Shug? Thanks for running that gumbo down the way. I hope Kuda didn't fill you full of too many holes. Well, yeah, I know those parts like the back of my hand. Mama Amy's right, though. This time of night is no time to be wandering around out there. Besides, Shug, I'd love to help you, but I'm the only one working tonight. And right now, I got to tend to a toilet, went and got all backed up. Oh, a bar full of thirsty folks needs a working bathroom. Lamont usually fixes it, but he ain't here. Any chance I could ask one more favor? Here's the key to the cellar. Run down there and grab the plunger for folks start going in their britches.
hear me? Ugh, stop calling my... Fixing that toilet down. Okay, well, now there's a, we call this the secret sauce. This is, you know, how you're going to fix it. So, uh, first of all, you want to stand in front of it, you know, like you're looking at it. And then you want to flush it four times. You want to plunge it three times. And then you want to flush it five more times. Now, you do that, and it'll get her done. But, uh, you know, I'd come down there and help you on account. But, you know, this humidity and the goiter, I mean, it's just acting up. And the kids are pranking me. So, uh, okay, never mind. Bye-bye. I love you. Thanks for fixing that toilet. Any chance I could offer you Lamont's job, seeing as how you're doing it anyway? Well, you're welcome to it if it still runs, though it's probably out of gas. Tell you what, though. You've been such a help tonight, I'm going to fix you up. Tater's brother Bubba owns the gas station next door. He owes me a favor. How about I make a call and have them turn on the pumps for a few minutes, hmm? Stop dallying and help find my husband. Well, hey there, detective. Any luck finding your missing man? Alice and Dennis Blanston. Never heard of them. But if you want, I can call my cop buddy over in Boudreaux and have him run those names for you. 
Just give me a sec. I really got to go now that the toilet's working again. You were right. The detective is starting to figure things out. Absolutely. When we find the gold, we're going to have to get out of here fast. What do you mean you were spotted? Tell me you had your disguise on. So close. Just stay calm. I will. I will. We're on our way to meet you at the clearing in the swamp. You were right. The detective is starting to figure things out. Absolutely. When we find the gold, we're going to have to get out of here fast. We'll get rid of the detective when we leave. Don't worry. I hid the computer password behind the picture of the kid and the dog. This is Venton from down at the Swaller. Listen, I had my buddy in Boudreaux run the names on those IDs, and the results aren't good. Alice and Dennis Blanston are convicted felons with warrants and arrest records that run all the way from kidnapping to robbery and even murder. There are no Lawsons. Those folks must have heard stories about the treasure and claimed to have inherited the house. You got to get out of there. I had a feeling you were close to the truth. Moving into Crown's old home was the easy part. Solving all these riddles proved to be a bit more challenging. We knew the neighbors would leave us alone because of their foolish urban legend. My husband's disappearance only made them more cautious, which gave us a reason to call in a professional. The little bit of research we found just the right person to figure out what we couldn't. Just think, Detective, you're only 13 skulls away from locating a treasure lost to the ages. Now, find all the skulls, put them in order, or I'll feed you to the gators. No funny business, Detective. I'm going to be behind you the whole time.
got skulls, detective! Trying my patience. We don't have much time. Use those intuitive skills. Moving. Nice work, detective. Close there, detective.
don't even think about running. We're getting closer, detective. Detective! Trying my patience. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Now, detective, you are running out of time. Detective! Find the skulls, detective!
You are trying my patience. Make this harder than it has to be. Don't even think about running. I've got my eye on you, detective. No fast moves. Trying my patience. This harder than it has to be. Moving. Quick 
Yes! Use those intuitive skills. I've got my eye on you, detective. No fast moves. We don't have much time. Use those intuitive skills.
up, detective! Another mystery. Too bad it'll be your last. Stupid detective. There's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Detective? Detective, you all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. There ain't no such thing as ghosts. Well, of course there are. Oh, hogwash. Well, just you because you ain't ever seen one. Well, you this, always have ghost to be seen. Everything that. I say. Well, Why do you have to argue with me all the that. time? I'm so tired of Detective? listening about ghosts. You all right in there?